Welcome! In this series of videos, we will look at software add-ons for the PowerBasic Windows Compiler. Today we will look again at the My Little Grid Custom Grid and add some more configuration. This was our application at the end of the last video. We have a dialog on which we have a My Little Grid Custom Grid. This grid is currently displaying 60 data rows of random data. We have used one of the functions in our library to colour bank the grid rows so that they are easier to read. We have a drop down list in the division column, allowing us to select one of a number of specific divisions. When we configured this grid, we set it up for a certain column width for each of the columns. However, what happens when the data in one of the columns is actually wider than the column can actually show? Can we handle this automatically? Let's amend one of the columns and we'll see what we can do. Here is our data file. This is a standard CSV file. If we wish to amend the surname to make it longer, let's take one of the existing surnames and we will hyphenate it. Now if we try running our application again now, we will see that on row 10, the name in the surname column is actually wider than the column can currently support. Now the user could manually extend the column by moving the slider bar. However, can we do this automatically? Let's look at the callback function, the event handler of our dialog. In this callback function, in the initialization section, this is where we're populating the grid. So before we colour bank the grid rows, we're going to attempt to widen one of the columns. We're going to be using one of the macros in our library. And we're going to be using the widen a column in grid. This will either widen or narrow a column to fit the data within the column itself. So since we know the data that is too wide is currently in the surname column, let's widen just that column. We will pick up the column number using the get column number function and a call to that macro, passing it two parameters, the grid handle and the column we wish to widen. So if we run that code now, we'll see that the surname which we had increased in size is now fitting quite happily within the surname column. This is very useful as you cannot always guarantee the data within a column when it comes from an external source. Now we do have some columns that are wider than they actually need to be. For example, the division column is considerably wider than the data contained within it. There's another function we can use which effectively widens all the columns in a grid or narrows them to fit the data within them. So if we comment out those two new lines of code and call the new function. This new function is included in your library and this will actually widen the columns in the grid based on the data within the column. If we run that now, We'll see the grid itself is actually narrower. It has actually narrowed each column to fit the data within it. This is quite useful as it allows you to put more columns in a grid. And should the data later expand, you can always call the function again and it will widen the column to fit the data you've put in it. Another item of configuration we can add to a grid is to place a special user button on a specific cell or specific cells. Say for example we wish to put one of these buttons on every cell in the surname column. How would we do that? Well, first thing to do we would pick up the column number of the surname column. We can perform this activity by calling a new function in our library, the add user button to column function. It takes a mere two parameters, the grid handle and the column we wish to add the user button to. If we try running the code now, we will see our grid appears as normal. However, when we click on any of the cells in the surname column, a small grey button will appear on the right hand side of each cell. At the moment, this button does nothing. But what we will do later in this video is we will show you how you can pick up the event of a user having clicked on one of these buttons. So before we proceed further, let's have a look at the code behind the addition of this user button. So here is our function to add a user button to the column. 
this is a very simple function which first works out how many rows are in the grid and then for each row it's calling this macro and this macro adds a user button to the specific cell. So since we have a macro whose function is to add a button to a column we can make this conditional. We don't have to have every cell on the surname column showing as having a user button we can do it conditionally based on some other value. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the program up so that where the division happens to be petrochemical, it will then have a drill down button on the surname column. For every other division, there will be no button. So we will comment out these two lines of code where the button is added to every cell in the column. We're now going to add it conditionally. First of all, picking up the column number that is the surname. And we're going to use another variable to pick up the source column. This is a division column which we wish to test. And we will now use an add user button to column conditionally function. This takes four parameters. The grid handle, the column number which is the target. This is the one you wish to put the add user button to. The source column is the one you wish to test. And the value in here is the string in that column you're actually wanting to look at. So in this case, anything in the division column that has the value petrochemical in it, this will trigger the addition of an add user button to the column, which is the surname column. So if we try running that code now, we'll see our grid appears. And where the surname is not petrochemical, there is no button. However, where the division is petrochemical, we will indeed have a button. So using conditional formatting like this does give you a great deal of flexibility. While we're using one of the visible columns on the grid to trigger this conditional formatting of the surname cell, this could be taken from a hidden column, one that the user cannot see. But now that we've provided a button that the user can click on, how do we pick up the event of that click actually happening? Well, to do that, we'll have to go to the callback function, the event handler itself. Now, there are four variables we'll need to set up at the beginning of this function. These are to assist us to pick up the event being triggered and to determine which row and column is actually being clicked on. The first variable is a user-defined type. This MyGridData user-defined type is defined in the include file that comes with my little grid and we're setting this up as a pointer we then have two longs one which is the column that has been selected and one which is the row which has been selected and we're going to use this sdr text to pick up the value in the cell that has been selected so that we can see what data resides within it so we're now going to create a new type of event this is one we haven't shown before. This is the WM notify event. And the first thing we're doing in this event is we're populating our ML GN variable using this low parameter. This will pick up a message dependent value. When Windows sends a message to one of these callback functions, the L parameter value will contain different values depending on the nature of the particular message. Now in our case, we're picking up the event that has occurred when the user has performed some action upon the grid. There will come a time when you may have more than one grid on your form. So first thing we'll need to do is to determine which control did this notification originate from. And we can do that using our pointer to our MLGN looking for the NM header and the ID from element. When we configure our grid, we set up a dialog handle for it, MLG Grid 1. So if you have more than one grid on the dialog, you'll need to set up multiple case statements and handle the events coming from them, either together or separately. Having determined which grid our event has occurred on, the next thing to work out is what type of grid event has actually occurred. And in our case, we are specifically looking for the user button event. This is one of the defined constants in the MyLittleGrid library. 
If we get this far, our user has clicked on one of the user buttons. We now have to determine which row and column has actually been clicked on. And this can be determined quite easily using the Param1 and the Param2. This allows us to pick up the row number and the column number that the user has actually clicked on. And having got that information, we can use the MLG get function, which is one of the My Little Grid functions, to return the text that is currently sitting within the cell that the user has clicked on. And having got these three pieces of information, just for the purposes of our debugging, we can actually display using a message box the row, the column and the text that is on the cell the user has actually clicked on. This is to confirm exactly what the user has clicked on. So let's try running that code. So now that our grid has appeared on screen, if we click on one of the cells which will contain one of these user buttons, because the division is petrochemical, and we then click on the drill down button itself, our message box pops up quite happily to say that we have clicked on row 9, which we have, column 3, which it is indeed, and the text within that box is Barber, which is the surname contained on the grid. So now that we have an event that can pick up that user has actually clicked on a user button, we can then use that trigger to fire off anything we wish. It could perform some action in the background, it could send a message to another part of the application, or it could indeed launch a separate dialogue, allowing you to extract more information from the user and then save it back into the grid. However, we'll cover that in a later video. As you will see from our My Little Grid Light Utilities library, we have added a few extra functions. We've added the macro to widen a column in the grid. We've added another macro to add a user button to a cell. And an additional macro to remove a user button from a cell. We have two functions which add user buttons to a column. One that does it unconditionally and one that does it conditionally. And of course we have the matching remove user buttons from the column and the remove user buttons conditionally. This gives you a fair degree of flexibility on where to add or remove buttons. Our final function was the one that widens the columns in a grid. You should find that these functions do give you a wide range of actions you can perform on a My Little Grid. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching.